welcome back to my world of stuff. My name, of course, is that. I'm out and about. I'm out and about this afternoon. It's the whatever day of April it is, Thursday the something, 18th, I don't know. And uh, yeah, I'm out and about. I thought I would have a bit of a walk. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm feeling much better, but I wanted to um, try and build up my stamina by getting out for a walk. So I've come to Park Cum Darren, my one of my local beauty spots, which I've been to before. I think I've done videos here before. Yeah, I've had a cup of coffee. Uh, and now I'm just walking around the lake just to build my stamina up a little bit because I do still feel a bit breathless after this sort of chest infection which I think we sort of did a number on my lungs but what I want to do today is just sit down and do a bit of a TV recommendation for you I mentioned this last week I think in upcoming videos look at my hair <laughs> uh, I want to recommend two particular TV series which I've watched recently which I really think you ought to be taking a look at but in fact since I said that things have changed I've moved one of those series I've replaced it with another better one um, the series I'm talking about today are both on Netflix and I think once again showing the power and ambition of Netflix and the streaming services generally because they are making shows now that terrestrial channels wouldn't make and it does make you appreciate how important the streaming services are. Much as I support the BBC and the idea of terrestrial TV, you wouldn't get these shows on the BBC, you wouldn't get these shows on ITV, even Channel 4, which was once sort of um, the front runner for challenging television. They wouldn't do stuff like this for two reasons. One, it's a bit too challenging, and two, they just couldn't afford it. Because these are, particularly the first one, big, big shows. The first one is called The Three Body Problem. It's on Netflix. Eight episodes had a budget of 20 million dollars per episode which is what i mean by british tv you know their budgets wouldn't touch the sides or something like that you'll probably have heard about this series because it's had a lot of publicity since it's debuted about about two three weeks ago it's based on a series of chinese novels by this chap which i've never read i didn't i, I, I hadn't said never heard of them until a couple of months ago when the series was announced as on the way hard sort of science fiction very difficult and penetrable novels apparently but I quite liked the trailer, and I thought I'd give this show a watch. And uh, I found myself binging it across two days, and that's not something I, I tend to do, because I tend to take my time with shows, and because I watch a lot of shows at the same time, I tend to sort of pick and choose and jump back and forth between different shows. But this is one that I found myself watching very quickly, as I said, across two days. It's, um, it's a remarkable series, and one of the things that slightly put me off it going into it was that a lot of the reviews or early reviews had said it was quite dark and impenetrable there was a lot of quite high concept physics and a very deep hard science fiction stuff and you know i watch doctor who i don't do hard science fiction but i watched this and i was just completely drawn in by it the look of it the story which i think if you pay attention it, it sort of moves around in a couple of time different time periods but it's all sort of heading in this broadly in the same direction uh, how to sum it up that's the difficult thing it's it starts off in the 1960s where uh, a chinese scientist is is brutally beaten up by the uh, the regime in china his daughter becomes a scientist and uh, she ultimately years later makes contact with an alien species earth is always sending signals out into space trying to contact extraterrestrial life forms and she gets a response she picks up a response this response is if you get this message, do not reply. Do not reply. We will know where you are and we will come for you. Um, that's a bit chilling. She does a stupid thing. She replies and sets in course a chain of events that will cast a dark shadow across the human race for the next 400 years. So it transpires that this alien race is coming to the earth to conquer it. It will take them 400 years to get you. A part of the series is about how humanity now deals with that. And there are the usual sort of uh, panics and civil unrest as, as people come to terms with the realization that there is life out there and it's coming for us but it's a deeper darker story that crosses several other interesting realms it's it deals with existential issues about life our place in the universe there are various plot threads to do with a simulated computer game which characters enter there's different factions there's a faction that wants to work with the aliens there's a faction which is trying to find a way to stop the aliens or will fight them off when they arrive the stuff of traditional sort of outer space invasion earth story but much deeper and much darker much more introspective thought-provoking 
because it deals with the tropes of science fiction, aliens and so on, but it does it in a way that is realistic because it's about people now. And it's really quite extraordinary. And there's something about the storytelling, even though it's sometimes quite opaque and quite dark and you have to sort of work with it to pick up all threads and see how they all connect. They sort of do. And I was just completely captivated by this. And I think I've watched four episodes across one night and then four the next night or two the next night or two the night after. But no, I thought this was absolutely magnificent. It was my favourite TV show of the year. It's very hard to imagine that anything better will come along. However, there's another show in a minute that we're talking about. So I really highly recommend this. If I've got any criticism of it, yeah, I suppose I think I agree with a friend of mine said the other day that the second half pitches a bit too much into the human characters. Now, I know that was a criticism of the books, that it's about the ideas and the concepts and the science fiction of it, and not the humanity. And I think the series has tried to address that by putting a bit more flesh on the bones of the characters. And I agree that I think in the last couple of episodes, there are a certain bunch of characters that we spend a little bit too much time with and we dig a little bit too deeply into the sort of emotional arc. But it doesn't detract from the, the power of the main story, which is just um, absolutely gripping. The effects are astonishing. I think there's one particular episode which is terrifying in, in terms of something that happens. Um, I won't spoil it for you, but um, there's a lot of blood when um, a, a ship uh, like it's cruising through the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal, something is done to it and the people aboard it, which is blood curdling <laughs> in a very literal sense. Yeah, I can't recommend this highly enough. If you like science fiction that's got a bit more meat on the bones, it's absolutely one to watch. And as I say, I can't see anything else on TV this year coming close. Second show I'm going to recommend, just arrived on Netflix this week and I binged it all in one night. Having said I don't binge, here are two shows that I binged. This is called Baby Reindeer. You may have seen, it's had a lot of publicity the last couple of days. This is a seven-part series. It's not long episodes. I think the longest episodes are about 45 minutes. A lot of them are around 30 minute marks. So it's not a difficult binge. But this, although it isn't of itself a genre show or a horror show or a science fiction show, it is one of the most horrifying things that I've seen in some time because it's true. It's a true story. It's a true story that's far more terrifying than any sore or scream or any slasher film because it's a story about obsession. It's a story about psychological damage. It's, again, it's the sort of show that you can't see being anywhere else except on a streaming service. It's a true story based on the experiences of a comedian called Richard Gadd. I wasn't aware of his work. I think I might have heard the name, but he hasn't sort of broken into the mainstream. But he's done stuff on various shows over the years. He's a Scottish comedian, and uh, he came down to London years ago to try and find fame and fortune with his comedy show. Never really made much headway. He was doing comedy competitions and tournaments and so on. But he had a, a, a job working by the bar to make ends meet. And one day, this woman comes into the pub. It's called Martha. She announces that she's a high-flying lawyer, but she can't afford to buy a drink, which is a bit bizarre. He takes pity on her, which is his first mistake. He buys her a cup of tea. It, it leads him into a very dark situation where she becomes obsessed by him. She becomes his stalker. She's there all the time. She comes in every day and because he feels a bit sorry for her. He doesn't realise at first and he gives her free drinks. But he realises that this is getting a little bit out of hand. She tries to put a bit more distance between them but she becomes increasingly obsessed with him. She becomes increasingly abusive towards him one minute and then loving and full of regret and it's, it's a clear obsession. He for reasons that we discover later on he's not good with relationships and he doesn't quite know how to handle this he doesn't quite know how to keep a lid on it he does his best to sort of dissuade her but she misinterprets everything he says as declarations of love and obsession so the situation gets worse and worse it never gets into a particularly to a point where there's violence involved so it's you know it's not a stabby stabby horror thing but it's terrifying and horrifying because it is a real story that's really happened to this guy and it is, you see the situation he's in and the, the things he, he tries to do to get out of it, which just end up making the situation a bit worse. Things come to a head, certainly in terms of the story in episode four, which is a flashback episode to when he as a comedian went up to the Edinburgh Festival years ago with this rather threadbare comedy show and ended up performing in this off the beaten track pub with hardly any punters and really not much interest. Till he attracts the attention of apparently quite a well-known TV writer whose show and work he admired in the past. 
this writer takes an interest in him and his work and things get increasingly dark. This isn't an episode really about the obsession element and Martha. This is sort of explains why Richard or the character that Richard Gaddy's playing, Donnie, is the man he is, why he's damaged and he is damaged in, in every, every sense of the word. It, it's very... Episode 4 is one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen on television. It's graphic and unpleasant. And it is all of these things because we know it, it is true. This all, this all happened. I mean, it, there may well be embe embellishments for narrative purposes, but this all happened to this book. And he's come out the other end of it now. I won't say any more about it because the story does keep developing and does keep rolling on. But at the end of the day, this is the story of a man who was stormed to relentlessly by this woman who sent him thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of emails, voice messages. She would not let him go. It's extraordinary television. It really is extraordinary television. And it's not an easy watch. In only ways that the three-body problem is still easy watch, but it's not easy because it's very, very dark. I mean, there are shafts of comedy light arcing through it occasionally, but it, and it, and its chorus is a very traumatic story with an ending that will probably make you gasp because the, the title sort of comes together in the very last episode which sort of reflects the beginning of the series really if you've the stomach for something that is brutally honest raw uncompromising and contemporary it's baby reindeer which is on netflix now right thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed this video which i've done out and about i don't know how much wind there is whistling across the microphone but um yeah i just wanted to share my thoughts on those two series i've been meaning to do it for a couple of days i thought i would do it now if only it gave me a chance to sit down halfway through my walk right thank you for watching this video hope you've enjoyed it if you have why not like and subscribe because there's lots of stuff like this on this channel loads of reviews out and about unboxings you know films another film review coming on the weekend so there's lots to look forward to all you have to do is press that subscribe button i'll see you soon until i do keep taking the stuff